we often are asked about supplements that might be helpful uh, for fertility, and our patients will come in with long, long lists of supplements that they've heard about on the web. Uh, actually, there's only evidence for a few, and we're going to talk about one today, and that's CoQ10. CoQ10 stands for uh, coenzyme Q10, uh, which is a, um, uh, a coenzyme that exists inside mitochondria inside all, all, all of our cells. Um, now the mitochondria, you may know, kind of are the energy source uh, for cellular function. Um, so what the coenzyme Q10 does is help build up a substance called ATP. And ATP is the energy that helps run, run our cells, run, run our bodies. And so um, the cell builds up its stores of ATP um, through the action, in part, of CoQ10 inside the mitochondria, and that gives the energy for, for the cells to do all the things they want to do. Uh, now, one of the observed um, uh, problems as, as women age or are losing ovarian function um, is that uh, the older uh, you get, um, the less energy is available uh, to, the, to the egg uh, as it develops. And of course, energy is very important to the egg because the egg is the, um, uh, the thing that sort of runs all of the uh, processes in early embryo development. So the sperm shows up and del delivers a little package of genes, but it really falls to the egg uh, to carry the weight in the first few divisions of an embryo. And uh, to be able to do that, it needs to have sufficient energy um, to be able to uh, carry out all of those processes. Now, the um, uh, egg is not alone in this uh, activity. The egg is surrounded by little um, uh, cells, what we call granulosa cells, and they all have little connections uh, to the egg, like uh, small little umbilical cords. And the granulosa cell's job over the weeks uh, prior to the egg being ovulated and matured is to help build, help the egg to build up those stores of energy um, that are then ship those uh, ATPs back into the egg uh, to provide that energy. I think of it like storing up um, uh, all your food for a long winter or for a long journey. Um, and that's part of the process leading up uh, to the cycle in which the egg is going to be ovulated. So um, what we found, um, and uh, what's been published in a few uh, studies, and this is one of the few supplements that have some evidence to support uh, that they actually do something, is that uh, in animal work uh, and in, in human beings as well, um, exposure to CoQ10 uh, for a few weeks or months prior to going through um, a cycle of IVF um, uh, in people, obviously, um, will lead to uh, better quality eggs, more eggs being produced, and better quality embryos. And so, um, although there's not a lot of data, the data that we uh, see is um, compelling. And the other point is that CoQ10 is um, safe to take. There are no important side effects. It's a good uh, nutrient. Uh, you can buy it uh, over the counter in most uh, health food stores. Um, uh, so it's safe and um, there's some evidence that it's effective. Uh, and uh, we've been recommending it to our patients who have a history of diminished ovarian reserve um, before they go into cycles just to help build up and make sure we get the best quality egg that we can to take into the cycle. Uh, we generally combine that with the other supplement that we greatly believe in, which is DHEA, and we'd ask our patients to take those two together um, for at least uh, six to eight weeks before they go through an IBS cycle. Now, with regard to uh, CoQ10, um, you may know that uh, uh, molecules come in um, different configurations. So you can have the same molecule Think of it as either being left-handed or right-handed. It's the same thing, but depending on how it comes together, it's, it's sort of mirror image of each other. Um, only one of those is actually 
active and the other one is is not as active as, as its sibling, um, as its mirror image. Uh, the form of uh, CoQ10 that we recommend, and that's a lot cheaper to buy on the market, is actually the combination of these two uh, together. That's called a racemic mixture. Um, and there's actually no real evidence to suggest taking the pure one, which is called ubiquinone. Um, there's no evidence that that's really any better than taking the racemic mixture. And uh, ubiquinone is usually much more expensive than just taking regular CoQ10. So uh, here at CHR, we generally recommend, um, if you're going to take this supplement, that you just take the regular CoQ10. And uh, that's the story. Thank you.